Hello and welcome. So in our sequence of videos, we've been talking about different types of clustering. You'd realize that in almost all the clustering techniques, there are choices to be made regarding the distance and the linkage approaches. So in this particular video, we're going to talk about different types of distance measures and the linkage approaches. First of all, let's say we have two points in a two-dimensional space where the first point is x1, y1. So this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. The second point is x2, y2. Now, if you look at the difference between the x and y values here, it will be very simple. You can calculate this difference along the x-axis and this difference along the y-axis. And these would be x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1, respectively. Now, the most common distance measure that we know and use very often is known as the Euclidean distance, which will be this diagonal distance. If you see, this is my D Pythagoras theorem. The square of this distance would be equal to the sum of the squares on the x-axis and the sum of the squares on the y axis. This leads us to a formula, which is root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Notice we are squaring these numbers. Even if we shuffle the order here, it would not make much of a difference in terms of its interpretation. So this is the calculation for distance, which is the most common distance which we study in schools. And most of the tools, this would be the default distance. But there could be times when for a specific task, we need different types of distances. What are those? So the first choice is Manhattan distance. So if you see the difference between these two expressions, this one and this one, the main difference is that in case of Euclidean distance, you were squaring and adding the differences. In case of Manhattan distance, you take an absolute difference. You disregard the sign. So these symbols represent that you're disregarding the sign for the difference between x2 and x1. Same is the case with y2 and y1. You're again disregarding the sign and you're just adding that up. Now, when is this distance applicable? When does it make sense? It's called Manhattan distance, inspired by the kind of street view you will see in Manhattan. So it's something like this, right? If you have to go from point A here to a point B, how would you go? You you would not take this path. You're not flying. You're probably driving, right? So you'll maybe you'll go a little bit on the y-axis, then on the x-axis, then again on the y-axis, then again something parallel to x-axis and y-axis. So you see at all times you're taking differences between x1, x2, y1, y2, and so on and so forth. So this would be the applicable distance in certain scenarios when you're dealing with something like a map maybe. I'm sure you all order food online these days and there is an estimated time of delivery that's indicated. How would they calculate the distance for their estimations? Would they be taking this distance? No, the delivery persons are not flying to your location, right? So they would again be considering this kind of distance. So if you're using Google Maps, it may be considering a hybrid, but it may not again be like the shortest distance which is directly connecting one point to another on a map because this is totally theoretical. You would mostly be following these streets. The way the street pattern is, is how you will plan your commute. Coming to the next distance, which is known as the Chebyshev distance, this takes the maximum of the two differences. Why? Because there could be times when you're trying to study the characteristics where you want to actually emphasize on the difference. For example, let's say you work for a company that produces computers and you have a close competition with another company, with which again is into producing computers. Now, maybe in terms of the quality of hardware that you use, you don't have too many differences in other aspects, but the quality of the processor has a major effect on the output. A lot of people rate your competition high because of the quality of their processor. In this case, you don't want to give equal importance to all the other components. Maybe there are differences in the quality of the memory that you use and your competition uses, but that is not coming out as a loud opportunity. So you may want to focus on these specific differences. At times, you would decide to go for a smartphone based on the camera quality. So maybe there are other differences as well. Maybe there is a difference in terms of the display quality as well. But if you see your competition is excelling on the camera quality, that is what you would want to give a higher weightage. So Chebyshev distance is coming up with that intelligence. Because if you see in other distances, you're giving kind of equal weightage to the differences on X and Y both. By the way, these are just the general representations for two points. If you have n points, you will keep on extending this expression across n points. For example, if you have multiple columns and we are trying to calculate differences, we will take differences across each feature and square them and add them up. This is how it works in case of a data set with multiple features. And again, there in case of Chebyshev distance, you'd be looking at one feature which has the maximum difference compared to the other features. That being said about the distances, Let's try to understand why do we talk about linkages as well. See, distances are applicable between the points. But when you have a cluster being joined to a point or a cluster being joined to a cluster, it's no longer just a matter of distance. 
because you have multiple choices. For example, here I could join these closest points. I could join the center of this cluster with the center of this cluster. I could join any point within a point in this cluster. So since you have multiple options, you have multiple linkage methods. Let's understand these one by one. So the first one is very simple. We join the closest points between the two clusters. And this is known as the single linkage method. You might be thinking, this probably is a great way to avoid outliers. And a lot of literature actually says that. So here's an example, just see to it. Let's say we have an outlier here, but because you're performing a single linkage, you would really not be affected by the outlier. This is what people tend to believe. What if I change this image a little bit? What if this point itself was an outlier, right? So it's not that single linkage is not affected by the outliers, as a lot of people state. It may also be affected by the outliers. Now you see, you're making the linkage based on an outlier value in this cluster. For this particular cluster, this black dot is an outlier because most of the points are somewhere else. So the point is, it would not be fair to say that we can manage outliers. Yes, uh, if you're lucky and your data is like this, then maybe you're able to avoid the influence of outliers. The point is, since we'll be dealing with a lot of data, which will have multiple columns, we would mostly not be able to visualize that data in a multi-dimensional space. So it will be pointless to say that taking single linkage works because we've been able to avoid outliers. You would not know that how your arrangement is. So we can try multiple options and see what works. Most of the times in the tools when you perform these tasks, they have some default linkage types assigned and those would work in most of the cases. Moving to the next one, if we join the farthest points. So in case of single linkage, we join the nearest points or the closest points. In case of the other type of linkage that we are talking about, if we join the farthest points, it is known as the complete linkage method. Once again, people would write about this online stating this is not affected by outliers and all. You can imagine your own cases. In general, the clustering techniques that we've discussed so far are mostly sensitive to outliers. There are exceptions, and we'll probably talk about those later. Let's come back to this. And what if we calculate the centers of these clusters? So for example, we calculate the centroid, which is nothing but the mean of all these values, and the centroid of these five points here, and we join the centroid. So as the name goes, it's known as the centroid linkage. Coming to the next one, what if we join every point of one cluster to every other point in the other cluster? It would look a little messy like this, as you can see, but this technique where we take all the joins and calculate the average distance here is known as the average linkage. Notice average linkage is not the same as centroid linkage. Centroid linkage had a calculation of the centroid as we saw, and we were just joining those. In case of the average linkage, you're joining every single point in one cluster with every single point in the other cluster. And then you're calculating the average of these distances. And that will be called the average linkage method. The one linkage which is very popular in these days and we used in our hands-on exercise as well is known as the ward linkage. What is ward linkage? Ward linkage basically focuses on minimizing the increase in variance within the clusters when they are merged. So when the cluster merging is happening, when we're joining one point to another or one cluster to a point or a cluster to another cluster, the way we did hierarchical clustering, when that is happening, it keeps a check on not letting the variance increase a lot. Why? Because we want the points within the cluster to be very similar. So it assumes that a good clustering solution should have clusters with a low internal variance. Internally, within a cluster, you shouldn't have much variance. This indicates that data points within each cluster are similar to each other. Now, often when you're trying to do cluster analysis using libraries from Python, etc., they will always have some default values. You can always experiment by changing those default values. But if the default values give you good results, you can just stick to them. All right, this was a short video regarding the distance measures and linkage methods. Hope you get clarity on this. Thank you.